Hey, I'm Nick and I made my own custom Kindle experience and I'm going to show you how. So let's get into it. Let's start with the why. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm kind of on a personal journey to segment the functions of my life into discrete devices. I'm looking to move away from all-in-one consumption machines and more towards dedicated and curated experiences, as well as just a couple other personal life things I'm doing, like making an attempt to fix my relationship with books and reading. Some background on me and my brain, I've never really liked reading. I grew up in a school system which, in my opinion, over-prioritized books and the literary thinking. And as a young boy with dyslexia, you can imagine I butted heads with that way of thinking quite a bit. You can ask anyone in my life and they'll tell you, I have a general reputation for hating reading. However, after having spent some time out of school now, and after watching some amazing bookish creators here on YouTube, I've started to come around on reading in general. However, there is still one thing that I struggle with, and that is the format. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a good old book, I actually collect some of them, and there's nothing better than that musty smell of a well-loved secondhand book. However, while the formats, I'm sure, are highly optimized and iteratively designed to work well for the average reading brain, that brain is not mine. So one thing I've been struggling with is actually comprehending what's being said on the page. My personal flavor of dyslexia particularly affects my reading comprehension. In other words, I find it draining enough to get through the words themselves that actually comprehending what's being said on the page generally falls to the wayside, and if I'm actually reading to understand, I generally have to read back over the same thing multiple times before my brain will actually switch over into comprehension mode. Now, this isn't an issue when it comes to the short and sweet writing that you usually run into on the internet, but when I'm reading a book that's, say, 200 pages long, I'll, on average, end up effectively reading four to 600 pages because of how many times I've had to go back and reread the same sentence to understand what's going on. And e-readers don't inherently fix this issue. However, they do make books and reading far more accessible. And I've certainly found that while I love the feeling of a book in my hand and the smell of the pages and that whole experience, I've noticed that after picking up quite a few books I actually do want to read, I never do. And I, I don't know, maybe it's some psychological aversion to the act of reading from a book that I still have from school, but I just find it to be far easier to get myself to engage with an e-reader than an actual book. And I think a big part of that is my ability to customize my reading experience, which is where we get to the software part of this mod. I want to be clear, this is nothing new. Kindle jailbreaking has been around for a long time. Uh, whenever there's a platform which arbitrarily decides how you should interact with it, you can bet a jailbreaking community is going to crop up around it. And the Kindle is no different. Many Kindle users have become more and more disenchanted with the way that Amazon has decided the intended user experience of their e-readers should be. Now, I'm not going to debate the validity of jailbreaking your Kindle because I think that can devolve into a pretty unhelpful discussion. Regardless of the reason, the facts remain. People want to do this. And compared to the process of jailbreaking, say, an iPhone, it's actually fairly straightforward and very low risk. I would suggest you go check out this video by Dammit Jeff. It's actually the thing that made me aware of this in the first place and got the ball rolling on this video. But basically, you need to go to the website of the jailbreak and follow the step-by-step -step instructions there. It's a fairly easy process. However, I do think it's made generally on the internet to sound far simpler than it actually is. It's not quite as simple as just dragging and dropping some files and Bob's your uncle, you're jailbroken, but in the broad scheme of software modding and jailbreaking, it's very straightforward and beginner friendly. But once you have the mod installed, you'll be able to boot into an e-reader software called CoReader, which is exactly what it sounds like, a software which lets you read your ebooks however you like. It also gives you access to a few functions that the built-in Kindle Reader just doesn't have 
or at least not that I'm aware of. Because if I'm totally honest, I did this entirely for fun and not really uh, because I had anything that I was trying to fix in particular. It was kind of just a fun project. Plus, I got to have the great feeling of sticking it to Jeff Bezos, which, you know, is always fun. But one of the main things that drew me to this jailbreak in the first place, because realistically, I could have done the hardware part without jailbreaking at all. But the main thing that drew me to the jailbreak was the added ability to customize the screensaver. Without the jailbreak, Kindles default to one of two states when you put them to sleep. Either they show some vaguely reading related image, which Amazon decides is what you want on your screen when you're not reading, or if you opted into their special offers option, uh, you get ads slapped on your screen for a discount at time of purchase. Now, this is going to be an important factor if you too are interested in the screensaver function. And it's one I wasn't really aware of before going into this process, but if you want to get access to the screensaver function, you need to unlock your Kindle if it has special offers turned on. And this is where the real bummer comes in. As far as I can tell and personally confirm, the only way to do that is to pay Amazon 20 bucks. Apparently you used to be able to contact customer support and they would be able to do it for free, but when I did that, they said they weren't able to do it anymore. Now, I have seen some articles online talking about how to get around this and disable it without having to pay, but I found those after I had already paid the money, so I can't tell you if it works or not. But this is definitely something you're going to want to take into account before doing any of this. If the screensavers are important to you like they were to me, you're going to want to make sure whatever Kindle you use doesn't have any special offers enabled unless you're willing to pay uh, to disable that or to try to see if the article that I mentioned was right about their workaround. But given that you figure out all of that and successfully jailbreak your Kindle, what's next? Well, hot off the press, nothing. The jailbreak itself doesn't actually really do anything uh, kind of obvious to your Kindle that you can use right away. For that, you'll need to follow the next steps in the documentation. And this involves installing a hotfix so that when you restart your device, the jailbreak stays active, and installing a few programs which will allow you to mess around with your Kindle, the main one being Kual. This is where you find CoReader, and for me personally, that's about as far as I've gone. However, you can theoretically install games and other programs on here as well. However, as Dammit Jeff showed in their video, running those on an e-ink display is ill-advised. However, you can do that if it's up your alley. For me though, CoReader was really all I was looking for. CoReader lets you read ebooks in pretty much any format you like, except for ones which are locked down with DRM like Amazon's proprietary format. But on top of, you know, not getting in the way of you reading your ebooks, CoReader also improves on the Kindle experience in the level of customizability. Like I said earlier, it allows you to change up the screensaver images to any image you want, really. I got the Ghibli and Powerpuff Girls uh, images that I'm using on the Discord that Dammit Jeff made for their video, but you can really add any image you want, and you can set it to either display one single image every time or cycle through all the images in a specific folder. The customization doesn't stop there though. CoReader lets you go absolutely buck wild with the customizations. Everything from the font you're using in your books to the gestures you want to use to navigate the menus and add bookmarks. It's honestly a really great experience and it's pretty much everything I would want out of an e-reader. It's easy to understand, easy to use, and doesn't get in your way. Oh, and one last thing. CoReader comes with Caliber support, which basically just allows you to wirelessly download books to your device. So, if the charge port on your unit is a bit finicky when it comes to a data connection like mine is, that makes the whole process of adding books way less of a pain in the butt. Plus, it's just kind of cool to be able to beam books to your, to your Kindle wirelessly. But that's just the software stuff, and that's the part of this mod which can be used on pretty much any Kindle. The hardware, on the other hand, that's a bit more complicated. So, let's take a look. So this is entirely unnecessary for you to do. You can absolutely enjoy your Kindle with the stock housing and never crack the lid on your little e-reader. 
However, if you're like me, a serial hardware modder, the absolute first thing I wanted to do when my sister-in-law gave me her old Kindle was rip its housing off. Now, I'm not saying the stock housing is bad per se, but it's just not for me. And given that this Kindle Paperwhite 7th Gen just so happens to fit rather perfectly on the bed of my A1 Mini, I figured I might as well try to improve on the design. To start with, uh, this Kindle is from 2015, so the original design is decidedly not to par with what I expect from my devices. Now, there isn't really anything I can do about the internal hardware, but, like I could add a bigger battery, but that's not really necessary. Even after 10 years of sitting in a drawer totally dead, the battery on this is perfectly functional, and after charging it to 100%, like three weeks ago, it's still at 50, so I really don't have any complaints about the battery life. And all the other specs, which would actually make a pretty big difference, like the CPU, RAM, and storage are all soldered onto the board and under these little covers, which are themselves soldered to the board. So instead of risking breaking it outright to do anything to those, I decided to leave it be. And frankly, it works just fine. Ebooks are really small files, and I don't exactly see myself amassing a library of thousands of them, so I think the four-ish gigs that this thing has is fine enough. But that leaves us with the shell, and this is where I really like to work anyway. Now, I'm not saying that the stock shell is horrible, but it's a rather dated design. They clearly pulled from Apple's book when it comes to the attempt to make uh, this thing feel thin. You remember how all the MacBook Airs and iPads had that very gradual slope to the back? Well, that was there not just for aesthetic reasons, but because it allowed the device to feel thinner than it was. And this was actually a rather clever design. It does genuinely work, and it can help thicker devices feel pretty good in the hand. However, I've never really loved this approach. I personally much prefer to let a thick device be thick. There is absolutely no reason why you can't let your product be what it is, in my opinion, and there's no shame in that. So that's exactly what I did. Now, this wasn't an entirely aesthetic choice. I knew I would be 3D printing the shell, so I had to keep in mind the limitations of a 3D printer, and I knew I wanted it to basically come off the printer ready to use, and adding such a shallow slope would make for a not-so-great-feeling finish to the back face. Plus, again, I much prefer feeling the thickness of a device, and I just think that it's a far more appealing look to just have it be a rectangle. And that worked to my advantage when it came time to print. This way, I can just print it flat on the bed and not have to worry about any overhangs or any weirdness with anything on the back. Now, I did decide to split the back into two pieces. This was because I wanted to do something with the back panel. I didn't just want it to have the bed texture uh, as just the texture of the back of the device, and the plan is to have this piece attached with screws. Uh, in this prototype, it's held on with double-sided tape because I couldn't order any screws in time for this video, but that's a very simple and easy addition to the design file that really anyone can make. So for the back plate, I wanted to break up the simple flat surface, and I toyed around with a couple ideas before landing on this extruded slot design. I really like the way that it looks, uh, and it kind of just adds a bit of contrast with different colored materials, and it gives you somewhere to grip the device. Though I admit that's not really the biggest concern uh, with a device like this, but I think it just does it does just add aesthetically. Overall though, I'm really happy with the shell design, and I think it looks simplistic enough not to be too overwhelming or distracting from the content of the display, while still having some personality and opinion, as well as plenty of options for customization. I left the top panel blank, so when you're printing this, you can put whatever cool video game icon or brand logo you think might look good there. Or you can print it blank and add some stickers or badges to it. I wanted to make sure that you have as much choice possible when it comes to customization, and I hope that that proves successful in reality. And that was a bit of a driving force for all of this. I wanted to make sure that no matter what, you could customize any aspect you wanted to about this, which is the whole reason that I'm giving away the raw CAD file totally free. But even if you just want to mess with some color customizations, I tried to make that easy too. I made sure there are plenty of areas where you can specify color blocks and try to separate them physically instead of just having them be arbitrarily painted on. 
So something like the front faceplate is a totally separate piece, so you can take that and do what you will with it. But that brings us around to the inside, and this is where the problems are going to arise for all of you. Unless you have this specific model of Kindle, I can't guarantee it'll work perfectly. Now, uh, I don't know if other Kindle Paperwhites share the same body and mounting system, but this is made to fit like a glove for this Kindle and this Kindle only, and I suspect there will be some conflicts with other models. However, like I said, I will leave a link to download the Fusion 360 file, so if you want, you can open it up and mess with it to make it fit your Kindle. However, I can't guarantee anything. I want to stress, this was really a project for myself, and I wanted to use it to hopefully get you excited about the possibilities of modding your own Kindle. You don't have to go to the lengths that I did, but even if it's just giving yours a custom paint job or slapping some custom firmware on it, whatever you decide to do, the point is to take control of your hardware and get a feeling of ownership over it. Something I take great issue in with modern tech design is the lack of personal connection we have to our devices. Like, sure, lots of people would say they're addicted to their phones, but that's not really the connection I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of connection that makes you want to make your device yours. Give it a cute case or a paint job which reflects something about you as a person. That's something I think a lot of tech products are missing, and it's something I really seek out in products that I buy or make. But okay, that's enough soapboxing. I hope you find this to be a fun project. I just think it's really cool that we're able to take a Kindle this far from what it used to be, despite Amazon's best efforts. And uh, this is the kind of thing that will help keep these products out of the junk pile in the future. Design aesthetics may come and go, but if the hardware still works, I don't see a reason not to breathe some new life into your stuff and turn it into something you're excited about using again. And while I hold no illusions that me jailbreaking my Kindle and giving it a new housing is going to stop Amazon from pushing their ads on everyone they can and manufacturing e-waste, it does certainly make me feel a bit better about using something made by them, because this is genuinely great to use. I mean, is it a bit slow? Sure. May I run out of storage at some point down the line? Maybe. But I'm just super happy about being able to give this little guy a new lease on life, and I love knowing that instead of going into the trash like it may have, this can possibly help me to find that spark in books that everyone else seems so enamored with. So again, I want this to be a bit of a community project. I by no means think this is finished, and I would love to see what kinds of additions you all make to the design to improve on it or just get it more in line with your own personal aesthetic. Regardless of what you do though, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I'll leave all the relevant links uh, down in the description, so make sure you go check those out if you're interested. But other than that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss another video. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.